What was Triple H's reaction now when fact you was going to be facing them at SummerSlam? I, I don't know for sure because I didn't I wasn't like buddy, buddy buddy with him, but we were working together, so we talked a lot and he told me a lot. I, as someone had said, and I don't, I don't know if it's true, he, he didn't feel like Eugene was probably the right guy that he should have wrestled at SummerSlam. But Vince was like, "No, this is this is the blow off. You know, he, 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 you know, we need we need a pinnacle to here." I don't know, but Triple H definitely I think had fun with it because all of a sudden he's got a guy who can work a different character. And they could write it out and write it for so long. And just that, it, it was awesome. And just that slow turn where Eugene wasn't sure you know, who to trust, Regal or, or Triple H. But when we wrestled the blow off match, it was in uh, it was in Toronto, right? And they turned, yeah. whole crowd turned on me. Whole crowd just booed yeah. the shit out of me and cheered Hunter. And I, I, I wanted so bad to just get some heat on him. You know, give him a big comeback, but he, he wouldn't, you know, he, he wouldn't have our match and he's the general. So I, I did it, but it came off great. It was fantastic. I was lucky enough, you know, to work with Triple H in the main event of SummerSlam. A main event. That's right. Yeah. It was damn Canadians, man. Fuck. Bunch of arseholes. <laughs> to me, um, I think I had mentioned at one point in our one of our interviews in the past how I had brought a trident to TV one time and prodded it at her husband and was like, come on uh, in front of the, everybody, like before they opened doors and um, a trident, like chewing gum. No, like an actual trident, like a metal trident that you impale somebody with like a, like a, like, um, Poseidon. like Poseidon's pitchfork. <laughs> I had this trident cause it was one of those you're in limbo phases where you're, you know, you're trying to come up with something because they aren't coming up with anything for you. Right. And uh, I was, for some reason, I I had this gear made up that had my name on the ass, but like in a cool font. And it had seahorses, like these menacing looking seahorses on each end of my name. And uh, I had like seaweed coming up my kick pads. I was like, I'll just, I'll be like, name or something i don't know what i, I didn't yeah uh, it was like cockwa man um <laughs> and i had this trident on my crotch and i was like collecting all these weapons and stuff at the time i don't know why but i had found this trident that unscrewed in the middle and it was like a trident in one hand like a knife sword thing in the other hand anyway so we were in san antonio a lot of these things happen in san antonio and i drove down uh, and I brought this chart in with me because I was like, I'm going to go into the TV room and cut some promos or something. And I did. And Stephanie loved them. She was like, this is great. I love this look. And this, I think we're going to do something with this. And then uh, this is so good. This looks so good. And um, then I, uh, I went out to the ring before doors opened and uh, Nova Simon Dean was at ringside watching people kind of get stretched by Charlie Haas and um, on the outside of the floor area Hunter was walking with like Kennedy or one of these other kiss asses and a couple like he had a trail of little kiss asses behind him and he's just like staring daggers at me from a good distance, you know. I'm ringside with this trident, and wearing like these <laughs> these aqua panties, and uh, <laughs> and I could just see this this guy staring at me over his nose, and uh, I was like, "What the?" F I look over, and he's just giving me the worst look, and I don't know what got into me, but I was like, "What? What are you gonna do?" I saw Blade. I saw Blade Three. It sucked. Come on! And I jabbed at him in the air with this trident. I'm not kidding you. And he just he like his he went from this look of like <laughs> and just walked off. And if you ever ask Simon Dean, he was my witness i'm not kidding you i did not i'm not making this shit up it's a miracle 
a miracle I wasn't fired. But he like, puts his arm around me and he goes, what the hell are you doing? Oh my God. And he walks me to the back and I was like, what? No, no, he's got, I got to look at me like that. Come on. And I'm like jabbing this trident in the air. After. Oh, I got to go to the bathroom. Do you want to get this, Paul? You want to talk about this? Does this make you too mad? Not much to it. He just Does it like, aggravate you? Huh? Does it make you mad? I'll be right I mean, back. At the time, but if anything, it just re reflects like how fragile his ego was that he didn't think in a business standpoint in terms of <laughs> to establish a team by because you know if you think about it um the natural progression of that save basically what it was was he had just he had just beat the tag division on raw by himself mind you uh beating Cade murdoch and then umaga came down it was round one and brian and i make the save and then he pedigrees us as a thank you. So naturally, wouldn't you think if you have the business in mind that you would come back the next week with a six person match? Um, I don't know. That just seems to make the most sense in terms of building somebody, but to instantly cut them right back down, just to put yourself over like that to me forever said everything I need to know about fucking triple h you know and what a what yeah. a uh what his mind is and so and he was a coward about it too because he blamed it on buck to um kevin dunn and was like wasn't my idea it wasn't you know i'm just telling you it wasn't my idea like he kept saying that over and over again i was like okay we get it it was your idea you're just not you know, you're just afraid to say that but yeah it was just it was a really shitty business move that should have gone the other way yeah. uh to help four guys really because Mago was already in a big push and like, you just buried the raw tag champ by yourself by beating them. The least you can do is put one of them back over in a cheat the next week over in a six person and get the rub and just start building guys, you know, by association. But now more important for him to spit his water and do his pedigrees. I gave him a sick pedigree too. I should have. And that's one of my biggest things too is like, I, Obviously, had I known at the time that that was, you know, they just, I don't know. Like, obviously, if I could do it again, I would have just taken them down and just started pummeling them because, yeah, I would have been fired on the spot, but my, that would have been forever cemented as like a real thing. And yeah. yeah. So that's my one real big regret. <laughs> uh, Josh asks, uh, RVD, do you think that your unfortunate elimination chamber? Triple H frog splash injury caused you not to become champion in 2002 because you were so, so over. Um, I don't think that. I've never had that thought go through my mind. You know, I don't really know how the timing of that worked out in you know chronological order. I don't know when the injury or championship match or whatever, um, if there was one that you're talking about. Oh, I remember. I was there. You fucked him up big time, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I mean it didn't help our relationship. And I mean, I would, <laughs> <laughs> but I would think that if that was the case, then it would be more about just in general, like the overall relationship, not, not that one move. <laughs> but that was really like the only time, I mean, your frog splash has – as good an impact as anybody next to like Eddie Guerrero, y'all had, I mean, y'all even had a match over the frog splashes. So yeah, I, was um, uncomfortable. I was uncomfortable. It wasn't my idea and I was uncomfortable, uh, but I b believed in myself enough to think it's just going to work out. I'll be able to pull it off, you know? So that was a mistake on my part, you know, cause I didn't know how to judge how far to jump out because the cage wasn't going to give me any bounce and and is the extra height going to make a difference in my arc i mean i because yeah, you were literally bending that. over right he yeah. was closer in right he was a lot closer in all the above and yeah uh, you know it was my fault i fucked up and looking back at it you know it was never it was never like it wasn't like my everyday 
frog splash where I know, you know, this is what I do and I got you and don't worry, don't spin. I got you wherever you're at. I'll go to the furthest corner sometimes for my benefit. This wasn't like that. I was like, you can do this, Rob. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I remember one time. <laughs> in in retrospect, I shouldn't have done it maybe. Or I should have worked on it earlier in the day or something. We wrestled each other in Philly one time, and I remember I was like three quarters on the other opposite side of the ring, and you fucking hit me with it. <laughs> you got some serious airtime on that one, dude. Yeah, that some. It, it, but if they're a lot of times they're in like too close, and then there's nowhere for the momentum to go, so it's stiff as hell for me. It's got to be for them because I have to go just straight up and just straight down on them, like ugh, and I can't even like. I got one of those too. I got one of those. Two. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> Basically saying they kicked you out because they think you was a bad influence or not. Well, I mean, it was, I mean, he was kind of spot on. I mean, I mean, in terms of, it's funny how Blaney was like, he Blaney buried me, you know, like yeah. some of the things were false. Like I will tell you what was true is me and Orton were fucking, you know, like he was, he calls jack offs. We were jack offs. And Renee will tell you, like a lot of guys, like we travel, me and Orton would travel together. And sometimes guys would make the mistake of like, like one time, Rosie, God bless his soul, Rosie didn't have his partner to travel with. I forget who he traveled with, but he he wasn't on the tour one week, and he he asked me to hop in with me and Orton, and um, I was like, yeah, sure. By the end of the fucking, by the time we got the raw, he fucking dipped in another car. He was like, yeah, we're, I'm hopping rides. Like you guys are too much, man. You know, like <laughs> and we were, we were too much. We we goofed off too much, chasing girls too much. Um, you know, and, and they're right to, you know, they're probably right to split us up because it probably would have continued, you know, and, and as soon as they split us up, he took it a little more seriously and, you know, he was a world champion not too long afterwards. Um, but it was just kind of funny how Triple H, you know, was so blatant with, yeah, me and Rick didn't want him in the group. It was him that Rick, it wasn't Rick, you know, because like I can tell stories where like me and Orton were in the car riding with Flair and Triple H. And, tri and the problem was, is Triple H wanted to talk about, like, fucking hot tags and shit. You know, like, a three-hour ride, he wanted to talk about, you know, arm bars and hot tags and shit for three hours. And, and I understood it. You know, he wanted to talk, you know, X's and O's. But, like, Flair wanted to talk about young stuff, like girls and yeah. club. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, he when he said, like, oh, me and Flair thought it was a bad idea, it was, it was just Triple H, you know? Yeah. And... You know, and uh, that's that's and then the portrayal is kind of weak as well. Like, if you watch that thing, you literally think if you didn't, if you weren't a wrestling fan or didn't know I went from Mark Jindrak to Marco Corleone, yeah, like literally, you would think, hmm, I'll put I'm not a gambling man, but I'll put a hundred bucks and this guy's a crackhead in, in a year, you know, right? Right, you know, they make it look like it was the end all, end all be all, you know, like yeah. he didn't, he didn't make evolution, so. Oh, let's kill himself. You know, like it's, it wasn't like that at all. I went and regrouped, and you know, I fucking I regrouped and uh, went to Mexico and had a great career for myself. You know, so um, that's the betrayal. But that's they're always gonna do that. But they always get a yeah. you know, TV. They always make it like they're the first, the end, and you know, in between everything in between. You know, so I I understand. But like, you know. For any wrestling fan that knows, like, you know, and, and that's why, you know, recently I've been kind of like releasing some of my, you know, all these tapes I have on like these drop kicks, these super high drop kicks. I just oh. started releasing lately oh. on my social media, which people didn't see, you know, so oh. everybody arguing over like, who's the best drop kick? Like, oh, I, Mr. Perfect, you know, and I said, listen, no, no disrespect to Mr. Perfect. He is more over in his pinky than I'll ever be. Oh. In terms of drop kick, you know, nobody hold. I don't find many people hold a candle to my drop kick. Like, like yeah. you're right up there in my book, dude. I know. Uh, another one here. Uh, thank you, David. Uh, why didn't WWE push Maven? Uh, push you, Maven. You had a good look, entrance, and an amazing wrestler. Will you be at WrestleCon in Los Angeles, California? I I only have one issue with, and it's only with one word from David here, um, and that's the word "had." Why didn't WWE push you? Maybe you had. <laughs> you had. <laughs> Listen, that, I, I, who the hell knows? I I have my theories, and my the and I told you, you caught me on a good day. My theory is just Hunter didn't like me, and I got right. 
I got, I actually got, hang on, let me open this window. I actually got confirmation of this. I actually got confirmation of this um, um, at one of the signings I did just a few months ago from, from Sarge. Sarge told, pulled me aside, and I'm you know, catching up with, with Slaughter. And he was like, man, I always put, I always fought for you. He's like, I always fought for you in the, in the, the writers' meetings. And, I, and he was like, there's was, there was just one guy holding you back. And I, and I was like, sit on it. You know who it is, don't. And then I was like, fuck, I can't sit on it. I was like, Sarge, who was it? And he's like, I, I don't know. And I was like, was it Hunter? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, that motherfucker. Like, and for what? Like, what was, I'll never understand it because what did I like threaten him? Like, mm. I'll, I'll never understand it. I did nothing but put him over in every way. I've never did nothing but talk amazing. He's one of the best wrestlers I've ever seen. He's an amazing character <laughs> and he's positioned himself smart in the company. Like, why, what What am I going to do to threaten you in any way? I just, I never could understand that. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Well, R but, Renee, uh, you've, the, oh, go ahead, James. So, no, Renee can relate because Renee, you've said to me, like, in all your time in WWE, the two, you, yourself and Triple H was never on screen together because obviously you was big Jack then. Oh, yeah, yeah, Triple yeah. H felt threatened oh, yeah, by that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, dude, yeah. David, check this out, right? Remember when I, uh, were you around when I had that funky mustache? <laughs> yeah. Was, uh, yeah. Well, During your singles run. Yeah, that was like yeah. the biggest physically I'd ever been, right? So like, yeah. <laughs> I used to, because I have red facial hair, right? So I used right. to dye it in with mascara. So I'm, I go right next, to, he's in the mirror. I go right next to him to like paint myself up. And I was like visually bigger than him, like obviously like, yeah. way bigger than him. And he gets pissed off like, oh, he's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, and it's and it's the most amazing thing because what I never understood and it's got some guys knew this. Some guys like I always I think Rock knew it well. I think Taker knew it well. Obviously with what he did with with me in the in the in the Rumble. Yes. Yeah. In order to make yourself look good, you got to put people over. If not, who the hell are you beating? If you right. go out there and just squash somebody, what have you accomplished? Right. I could walk out of this office right now and find 10 people I could beat the hell out of on my way to the train station. What have I done? Right. No, I, what have I accomplished? Nothing. You know, but if you build somebody up, and especially if you build somebody that's bigger than you, and right. then you beat them, then you've accomplished mm -hmm. something. And you know what? Then you've made money and you've established a story. It's not not rocket science we're doing here you know right you know so You're right You're yeah right. it's funny me and randy used to ride down the road and literally talk about how dumb professional wrestling was <laughs> and, and all orton fans would be just mortified to hear just how stupid because we'd be like man we'd be like i get this we put baby oil on our almost naked body as we put on colorful underwear and then fake fight grown men for a living that's the say that out loud that's the dumbest thing yeah that, yeah like how dumb is that as a and wrestling fan I, i'm always trying to defend it <laughs> yeah and then and then you have people that have egos about that right like, i was so thankful to be there and just be just be able to have uh okay just any form of fun and have like any type of character and stuff i never left thinking i was you know like the, like did, do i really think i had a pinfall victory against kane no like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's still real to me damn it yeah like you think i got backstage and told bob holly bob that'll fucking show you <laughs> 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 Uh, both you guys is feeling on because i can remember this when we had to send send them back to ovw box on Rock. oh yeah how did that make you feel yeah you want to take that one mano yeah man i mean i know i get asked that a lot actually it's one of those things and i remember very vividly like uh i remember hunter kind of proposed it to me like as a joke he was like hey yeah uh, because originally the sign was supposed to say tijuana 
I don't know if you remember that, Jeter, or not. But I don't. I don't uh, remember that. Hunter, Hunter, Hunter thought it was funny. He goes, he wouldn't be kind of funny because it would Mitch's the shits if we put on the sign uh, back to OVW. And here I am, you know, kind of just happy. Uh, good you idea, know, Hunter. Yeah, 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 that's a great idea. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, again, I think if I was a little more, had more maturity under my belt and, you know, was uh, a little older, I probably would have. I wish I would put my foot down a little bit more and be like, no, man, because the illusion is that we're all going to be in there. And it doesn't, I mean, yeah, Mitch will be in there, but it just doesn't matter because it's just, the illusion is that we're all going, you know, back to OVW. And that's kind of like a shot on us, <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. And uh, it's one of those things that's happened too fast to really think about it. Mondo, I would pay to see you retrospectively have that conversation again with Hunter. When Hunter says, hey, Mondo, wouldn't that be funny if we put an OVW sticker there? You say, <laughs> good idea, Hunter. I like where you're going with that, but I'm thinking, mm, <laughs> I think yeah. we're going another direction. <laughs> <laughs> just to see uh, his straight face not on. putting it over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I remember being on the road and Hunter hated Mitch. Nick Mitchell, right? Yeah. yeah. He yeah, like, hated him. No one. No. no. Wow. Well, he, man, that guy nope. could make everyone laugh. Like Mitch, yes. for all, for all his, I mean, you know, look at, I feel like to earn respect in wrestling, like it's one, you have to pay your dues Two, know how to work three, pay your respects to everyone, shake everyone's hand, be a good dude. And I guess, also, and also too, know how to communicate, like know when to shut your mouth and know and keep your ears open and then know, have the confidence to speak up too. But I think uh, with Mitch, he didn't have the experience. And so that inherently made people not respect him enough. But, you know, some of his redeeming qualities, I mean, he, he, and he was in a tough spot, right? If WWE says, hey, let we're, we want to sign you, put you in a tag team. Like, I, I don't care what anyone says, they would do it.